My name is Brenda Anderson. I am a first year tenured nursing faculty member at Walla Walla Community College. We have a very diverse student population. And it's not just diverse in ethnicity or gender or age, it's diverse in learning styles. So we work very hard to address each student's learning styles, which it, that is a huge task, because uh, it's difficult to with a class of 70 or 140 at a time to make sure that all learning styles are addressed. So we do have some strategies that we use. The first strategy that we've utilized for several years is video recording our lectures. We are starting to use a program called Panopto. Uh, so when we lecture, the lecture is recorded by uh, screening the PowerPoint on the screen that's in front of the class as well as our, it records our voice. So if we give a lecture live on the Walla Walla campus, that is ITV'd or sent um, to Clarkston. So we are actually lecturing to two different um, campuses at the same time. Now that is recorded because there are some students that are audio learners and they may need to listen to the recording several times in order to learn the content. Also, when we have uh, students who maybe learn a little bit slower than other students, that gives them the opportunity to go back and pick up on what they missed. The nice thing about Panopto is that there is an app that students can download on their smartphones so that they can actually watch the lecture on their smartphone, and that's new technology for us. That's never been available before. Just about every student in our class has a smartphone. So that makes it possible for every student, no matter where they're at, to access that lecture. Matter of fact, students who commute, because commuting is one of the things that can be a barrier for learning because of the time spent driving back and forth to school, they can actually listen to that lecture. Not necessarily visualizing the screen, but listen to the lecture. Another strategy that we have is how we use our Canvas courses. We make sure that each instructor for their content posts a uh, PowerPoint of their lecture, and we actually post two PowerPoints. We post a slideshow so the student can log on, they click on the slide one at a time that they can scroll through, and then we print a uh, PowerPoint uh, attachment with the slides. We'll put like six slides on a page, and students have the option of printing that off so they can take notes. We started a um, pilot last year um, called Screencast-O-Matic. And we have uh, really enjoyed using this technology. Um, it's not free, there's a little bit of a charge for it, uh, but Screencast-O-Matic, uh, Ilona Pease-Verwer and I uh, piloted this for the Walla Walla campus and we started with clinical grading. Now, typically when we grade clinical paperwork, we would write down our comments, um, we would ask the student questions in writing on the clinical packets and turn it back to the student. The student would look at our comments, think about the questions that prompt them in their thinking on their clinical paperwork. Now, that worked okay. It was very labor intensive for the nursing instructor. And sometimes students, the comments didn't really mean anything to them. So we developed a plan to use Screencast-O-Matic where we upload the document into our computer, we're logged onto Screencast-O-Matic, and it does a screenshot of the document as we're going through it and grading it, as well as taping our verbal comments or questions that we have for the student. So the student will get anywhere from a 15 minute to a 45 minute instructional graded feedback on their clinical paperwork. And the feedback that we got from the students that piloted this last year was huge. They absolutely loved the feedback because it wasn't just comments and questions, it was actually instructional feedback. It was true formative feedback. Um, we expanded the use of Screencast in winter quarter last year. I tried somewhat of a flipped classroom. So, um, 
studies are out that show uh, that the traditional lecture format is not conducive to all students learning. So in order to meet those learning styles, we try to do, you know, auditory, we address auditory learners, visual learners, um, we address um, kinetic learners to a certain extent when we have in-class activities that are applying concepts taught toward lecture. So what we did is we developed little mini lectures. So I'll use my diabetic uh, content for an example. I took small little portions of my diabetic lecture. For example, I took out a section on um, how to treat hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia, which is low blood sugar and high blood sugar. And instead of giving that information during the class time lecture, I did it on a screencast. And the student's assignment was to watch that prior to class. Now, when they came to class the next day, hopefully they had watched it because we started class with a critical thinking assignment that covered the material in that screencast from the previous day. Uh, students absolutely loved it. And one of the things they loved was the fact that they had these small little vignettes or small lectures that they could easily go back to and access through a link. They just click on the URL link, takes them right to the screencast, they watched the screencast. Um, I had students that watched it four or five times. They were the students that may have some type of learning disability. Um, it could be a student who is a non-native uh, English speaking student, um, but they could, instead of wading through a lecture that's three hours long, that's videotaped on, we were using Tegrity at that time, or at this time it would be Panopto, they have one little part of a lecture that they can easily access. And students absolutely, I, I didn't hear one negative comment about using the screencast uh, for pre-class um, lectures and assignments. So it was a very positive thing. We also have a program called ATI, which stands for Assessment Technologies Institute. Now this is a program that our students pay for, and there's a fee every quarter. But this is an awesome program. It has skills modules in it. It has practice tests because in nursing, uh, different kinds of tests that students have a difficult time with because they're application questions. They're not just knowledge questions. So ATI is a, an essential part of our program. One of the things that I really, really like is it's very visual. Um, students don't have to watch the screen though because there's always somebody that's reading what's on the screen. So it's very auditory for those auditory learners. And then on top of um, hearing, those students that do better visually reading, the words to the script are also on the screen. Another thing that I really like is it has a pronunciator. So uh, for terminology, lots of students struggle with new terminology and in nursing and medicine, terminology is huge. You can click on a word under the pronunciator section and it will tell you how to pronounce that word correctly. The ATI modules, we assign them for some classes, but they're also accessible to students at any time. So students can work ahead or they can just work independently on areas that they feel like they're weak in. This is also the program that we use. Uh, we have non-proctored and proctored assessment tests. And uh, this is also the testing arena that we use for predicting uh, their ability to pass the NCLEX either the PN or the RN exam.